Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining me for this month's manga wrap-up. Um, this month is uh, is an interesting month in that um, I pulled out of my TBR, Jack, quite a couple of, of classic series. Um, series from authors too, in fact. In fact, the majority of things that I've read um, are the first things I've read out of these authors' catalogues. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's been a good month for, for reading. I haven't read as much as I hoped I would as um, the series that I just so happened to pull out of my TBR jar were more serialised. Um, but I did manage to complete two series? Yeah. I managed to complete two series. One One's a three volume series, the other one's a five or six volume series. Um, I ended up completing the final volume of a series that I started last month. Uh, and also started three new series. So I've got three volume ones uh, to talk about. And I'm also halfway through um, uh, an, another serialized series as well. So uh, uh, I guess I've got quite a bit to talk about. Um, these aren't really going to be thorough reviews. I'm just going to kind of give my um, thoughts of what I remember from some of this series. I think I'm going to kind of switch up the format uh, of this rather than kind of um, recording all of my thoughts um, on the series that I read in, in one fell swoop. I think what I'm going to do for next month, just so that the series are more fresh in my memory, is um, I'm, I'm going to record a video, really, as soon as of, as soon as soon conceivably possible after I've actually finished reading the series, just so my thoughts my thoughts on them are, are, um, are more put together, just so it's a little bit more polished, as uh, um, I had to kind of... Uh, rejig my memory on, on some of the volumes that I've read as um, I haven't got the best memory when it comes to reading manga. Anywho, um, I'm not going to do these in any particular order. I think the first thing I read was uh, was this. Um, Reiji Matsumoto's Space Battleship Yamato. Space Battleship Yamato, the classic collection by Seven Seas. This is a beautiful book, a really, really beautiful book. Material bound, as you can see. Um, a nice thick boy, uh, three in one hardcover um, with just a beautiful cover um, yeah so just kind of give you the gist of it uh, I'll just read off the blurb on the back uh, so it is the year 2199 the Gamelans a hostile alien race have bombarded the earth rendering it virtually uninhabitable and edging humanity to the verge of extinction Mankind's last best hope for survival is the space battleship Yamato, a legendary spaceship newly equipped with a faster than light drive and advanced weaponry. Its mission, to travel to the distant planet of Iskandar to obtain a mysterious device that could heal our planet. Can Yamato's ragtag crew traverse the galaxy, defeating an overwhelming alien force and return home in time to save the Earth from certain destruction? Um, so that really kind of describes really the first half of the, of, of the series. Um, it does start off of just uh, as just kind of like a a, a generic space opera um, Star Trek sort of clone. Uh, it, it's good, don't get me wrong. Um, you know the the premise is 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 really enjoyable, but halfway through it takes a noticeable tonal shift um, and becomes more of an allegory for um, Japanese imperialism. I mean the the clue is in the title. It's named after. Um, an actual World War II battleship called called the Yamato that was sunk, um, and uh, from what I understand, it was it was rediscovered um, and uh, and salvaged about ten or so years after this was published. So this isn't necessarily a celebration of it being salvaged. It's a really just kind of a, a commemorative piece, um, you know. On I guess maybe that. I, I, I don't know how successful of a of a boat it was like during the war. Couldn't it couldn't have been that successful given that it was sunk. Um, but it it the, it really does have this overarching motif of um, you know having a drink to uh, to the days of yore. You know the, the 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 great Yamato. You know Japanese imperialism, which kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. Um, but you know it, it it does have like a nice kind of um, you know it, it does touch on a, 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 a upon. Um, you know how veterans were treated after the war. Whether whether that's you know I don't really have any any opinion on that on that either way. Um, but the whole crew of the Yamato at, at a certain point, once um, you know, w once certain things have been uh, 
uh, completed, I guess, um, feel a little bit lost, um, and they just all kind of fall into melancholy, um, which is kind of depressing to read. Um, and I didn't expect that from 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 a series that's supposed to be as fantastical and futuristic, and you know, um, I, I thought it was going to be more just kind of like Star Trek, you know, very character driven, and you know, a couple of battles here and there. Um, but it, it really wasn't. Um, I, I didn't feel that like this was very polished at all. Um, it's quite a jarring read at certain points. There's a couple of flashbacks where you do not really clear that it's a flashback. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really like that. I had to kind of go back and kind of double check, wait, when did this happen? Because the, the timelines jump around quite a bit, um, which didn't really make for a comfortable read. So reading this was a little bit of a chore. Um, and it didn't really give give me a, the best first impression of, of, uh, of Leiji Matsumoto's work. Um, you know, having been aware of, you know, how legendary he is, I was expecting to be completely blown away. Um, and I kind of just left this with, like, with, you know, huh, okay, that was that. You know, I wasn't really, I didn't really dislike it, I didn't really like it, it was just kind of average for me. Um, so, yeah, now Space Battleship Yamato, it, it, it was it was alright. The artwork is, is really, really nice. There's some really interesting pages, um, as you can see here. Um, and one one thing that I really noticed was prevalent throughout this volume is, is uh, Leiji Matsumoto's love for technology. Um, he really he's got this unique style of of, um, of creating like computer interfaces that are just like full of dials and little buttons and you know little kind of levers here and there. You know, it's, they're just really really detailed computer interfaces like on on the ship's deck and and everything like that. So his 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 ability to um, to make that believable and, and make the environment look like it's something that you could step into um, is, is really, really good. Um, let me try and find an example for you. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I mean, that that is just, I mean, that's just so detailed. It looks fantastic. You can see all the dials there and, um, you know, everything's like rendered in black. So it just kind of gives it this like really polished, um, you know, kind of aesthetic, which is, is really, really nice. Um, you know, just... You, you see like a lot of pages like this where there's just not really a lot going on but it tells you know um it just kind of gives you this sense of scale and, and distance you know that this 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 battleship is is you know traversing through the stars um this page particularly i, I absolutely love the effect here um obviously it's kind of digital i think but i absolutely love that effect on that page it just looks gorgeous um but yeah no it, it's pretty good um the uh, the story follows um, a character called Susumu Kodai, and he's not a really engaging protagonist um, at all. He's just kind of um, he just joins the crew of uh, of of the Yamato after um, after him and his friend receive a signal um, from from a far off alien world um, about the impending destruction of Earth. Um, no, it, 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 the impending destruction of Earth, but that there's a chance for them to uh, save save the world by travelling to this far off distant planet and uh, and uh, and basically re recovering this lost technology that it, that's able to kind of re terraform the Earth um, because it's like I said, like it said from this from the blurb on the back, it's been ravaged um, by by meteors that uh, that have been sent by a hostile alien race, so all of humanity is underground. Um, and, you know the surface is completely uninhabitable um i guess when when you see the amateur as well the first time you see it it's just like a derelict wreck like on like one that look that looks like it's in a seabed it's like lodged into the in, in into the mantle of the earth um you know just lots of kind of parallels between the amateur in this and the yamato in real life um, so I suppose if you're if you're interested in history and Leiji Matsumoto, you know maybe you might find it interesting because there's some pretty cool Easter eggs, um, you know, and uh, you know little things that you can pick up on if you if, if you're aware of Japanese naval history, I suppose. Um, but for me, it wasn't really that interesting, and uh, the story as a whole just really wasn't polished. Um, but I, I'm glad to own it. Uh, it's a good translation. Um, there's a couple of actual printing errors in this where the the cover pages for chapter eight and fifteen are flipped, so that was really confusing. I thought I had, I thought I had a, um, uh, I mean, it, there is a printing error in it, but I thought the whole chapters would have been flipped as well. And because, like I mentioned earlier, the story is so jarring and it flips between timelines. 
Um, I wasn't so sure as I was reading through it whether or not it was just the title pages that were that were an error or if the entire chapters had been flipped uh, and that I had to look up on a forum to see if anybody else had the same problem and um, yeah it, it seems like it was a, a problem with with all of the, re the, the whole release um, but it was just simply the title pages that were flipped the chapters are um, in, in their correct order um, but that made for an even, even more uncomfortable reading reading experiences you know, I wanted to experience the story and it's you know um, even even though it was quite uncomfortable uh, and jarring to read you know I wanted to experience it in its original um, you know serialized format um, you know with the chapters in order so so that kind of threw me off uh, and I, you know I didn't enjoy that it kind of took me out of the story because I thought damn I've got a defective you know, product um, that I didn't know about until I started reading it, but I can live with it. It's only the title pages, um, the the chapters themselves are, uh, are are absolutely fine. So, yeah, that that was the I think the first thing I read. Um, you know, it it, it it was okay. It was average at best. Um, unfortunately, it does leave off on a on a really big cliffhanger, and in one of the penultimate chapters, it introduces a new character. And their motivations are, are explained through, you know, a brief little bit of exposition. But um, that new character's story is also obviously left on a cliffhanger as well. And it just kind of seems completely out of place. Um, one thing I did find really interesting is um, uh, I learned that this is also set in the state in the same universe as Captain Harlock and Queen Captain Harlock and, and Queen Emeraldus. Um, as Captain Harlock makes a really strange cameo in this, um, and I don't really know where where he fits in um because this is set in 2199 but captain harlock the actual series is set like hundreds and hundreds of years afterwards so that made me think is captain harlock really m kind of like a title rather than an individual um so yeah I, I read this um i did also read captain harlock um i'll talk about that uh i might as well talk about that next even though that's not the next thing i read so here we go. Yep, uh, I started reading Captain Harlock. Uh, this is volume one. I'm currently on volume two. I'm uh, about halfway through volume two. I'm enjoying it so far. It's a lot more polished uh, than Space Battleship Yamato. Um, the, the the main or maybe secondary main character is a guy called um, uh, not Kodai. What's this guy's name? T Tadashi Daiba. and he's basically just a copy and paste of of um, Susumu Kodai from. Um, from Space Battleship Yamato and I guess maybe because Yamato was released before I guess maybe that was sort of like a prototype for um, Matsumoto experimenting with some of the characters because the, there's characters that are in this that are come that, that that look exactly the same as characters in in Yamato but they're not the same people I mean this is set in um, I think it's like 20 2977 so like nearly eight you know seven eight hundred years after the events in in Space Battleship Yamato and the first volume kind of just covers um, what Earth is like after after those hundreds of years. Um, you know, humanity has become uh, docile and uh, and apathetic towards anything. Um, and uh, Harlock is is is, a, is essentially a space pirate, um, and he travel he travels through the universe with his ragtag group of uh, of pirates. Um, basically fighting for what's in his heart you know um, he he fights for what he believes and his beliefs aren't really explained um, you know he's, he, he's he's got a real true disdain for humanity and how apathetic they've become but uh, you know he's he, he's also willing to defend them to his last breath but then sometimes says you know maybe it'd just be best if humanity was just extinct um, so his motivations aren't really too clear um, from now and it's you know I mean I'm only in the second volume of this so far uh, the first volume has uh, has more questions than answers so I'm hoping that um, there's gonna be a little bit more polish um, and uh, you know things that are revealed um, also Queen em Emerald just makes an interesting cameo in this as well so that kind of just reconfirms that uh, you know it's all in a shared universe pretty nice artwork there um, I don't really find Harlock particularly too interesting. Um, I think he's a bit cheesy because this is like a, a real romantic space opera. So he really likes saying his own name, like I am Captain Harlock, and I'm you know this. I am the you know the paragon of justice and whatever. You know he's always making a speech and it's just it's really corny. Um, 
I'm not really a big fan of that, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I, I respect it for its influence and maybe the anime is better. I'm not too sure. I've never watched the anime, but I just find him really cheesy. <laughs> um, that's just kind of my initial thoughts. But I suppose once I've finished it, I mean, like I said, I'm on the second volume. So by next month in uh, in March's wrap up, I'll maybe give some more, you know, final final thoughts on it. But for now, it's it's OK. Um, you know, the story is kind of unraveling. Um, I'll talk more about it in, in, the, in the next video. Um, the next thing that I completed was volume one and volume two of Devilman by Go Nagai. Now this is my first introduction introduction rather to Go Nagai. I've never, I've never read anything by him. Um, I've always heard of Devilman. I'm really glad that this was released because it's obviously in a, again part of the classic collection. And again, I'm really glad that I pulled this out of my TBR. I mean, three, three series out of the classic collection, um, Yamato, Harlock and, and Devilman. Uh, pulled them out, you know, in, in succession. So I was really happy about that. Uh, and out of the three of them, uh, this so far is, is my absolute favourite. I absolutely loved this. This is fantastic. Um, you can definitely see how it influenced things like Berserk um, and, uh, well, primarily Berserk, really. Um, e e even, you know, kind of um, other shonen title, you know, shonen titles like Naruto. I, I can see a lot of parallels. Um, but Berserk, primarily, I can see this heavy influence um, in Berserk that uh, you know Miura would have taken from from Go Nagai. But this is essentially a story of a guy called Akira, um, and he's like a, a real softy, I suppose. Um, you know, he's uh, he doesn't he can't defend himself. Um, you know, he's, he's very um, uh, he's very passive. Then he has a friend called. Um, um, he has a friend called Rio. When Rio is introduced to the story very early on, he's he's, he's apparently very agitated, and he's, he's got something that he really needs to get off his chest with with Akira. Uh, and it turns out that Rio's father um, was was um, researching kind of like demonology, and uh, and this this uh, has uncovered this history of of demon kind existing um, on Earth millions of years ago that nobody knows about. Uh, and the, they've all of a sudden started reawakening um, as uh, they were all kind of uh, in cryogenic hibernation um, from the last ice age. Um, so these demons have started awakening and uh, um, Ryo uh, essentially uh, sets in motion a plan with Akira to um, have Akira absorb um, or fuse with, with a demon um, to become a human-demon hybrid uh, to basically fight off the the, the hordes of demons um you know eons old demons that are reawakening um and it starts off uh, the, the the first kind of couple of volumes because these are omnibus volumes it starts off as this kind of like a monster of the week um you know a new villain is introduced with their own motivations um w with demons as well what's interesting is that they all kind of had like, have like a not necessarily a hive mind but they, you know, if, if, if one demon learns something in terms of, you know, uh, the, the, the weak, you know, a certain weakness for humanity, then all of them will learn it at the same time. So they've got like this shared kind of learning capability. Um, and interestingly enough, it, because Aki refuses with the demon, he also has this as well. So anything that the demons learn, he learns. Um, and, you know, it's about kind of one up in um, each other, uh, you know, throughout the story. But the first half of it is kind of like a monster of the week sort of thing. And it's dark. It's very, very, very dark. Um, it starts off a little bit shaky, um, but it really takes its stride very quickly. Um, and you know, the 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 antagonists that are introduced um, are really, really interesting. There's a lot of variety in 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 the monster designs and um, you know the characterization of the monsters themselves. Um, but then the second half of the story is some of the darkest stuff I've ever read. Um, and I did not expect that from, from from a series that is, you know, quite old. Um, I mean, this was originally published in, in the mid 70s. Um, I mean, I've read stuff from that era that is really dark anyway, like Gekiga stuff. Um, but this isn't Gekiga. This is this is a shonen manga. This is this was published in a shonen magazine for you know for teenagers, uh, and it's really really dark. Um, it, I mean, I won't. I won't describe what happens because that would essentially be a, a, a spoiler for, for the manga. Uh, but I definitely, I definitely, I would read it uh, again. Um, I, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It's, it's up there with one of my favourites now. 
um, Devilman was was incredible, um, and I want to do a more thorough review of it and talk a little bit more about it. Um, as uh, you know, the, the artwork is very much of its time, but um, because it's representing and, and portraying such violent, you know, horrible um, situations, you know, the story is is good enough. It is good enough that the um, you know the the, the 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 more simplistic art style. Um, you know the, the story compensates uh, for that, um, but yeah, no, I mean Akira really grows as a character. I really liked his his character progression from from this just crybaby, you know, soft kid to um, you know somebody who's really corrupted by by this devil, this demon that's inside of him, um, and you never get to know the demon itself. The demon's called Amon, and it turns out to be uh, a really um, pride, you know, prideful. Um, uh, you know, high-ranking demon, but you never actually get to know him. It's not like they've got like a symbiotic relationship. It's just Akira has um, absorbed his powers, um, can transform into Amon, but has retained his own personality. So the, the, there's no internal battle with with Akira and Amon. Um, Akira's battle is with himself. Um, you know, he doesn't want to be consumed by by the rage and and the the evil that's. Uh, present in all of humanity and he sees, he sees a lot of really horrible stuff and he commits a lot of really horrible stuff uh, really horrible things um, you know you really get to see him pushed to his limit um, you know he, his, his loved ones and friends that are around him uh, suffer due to the imminent danger that he puts people in simply by virtue of him uh, possessing a demon with him, within him and him being a threat to demon kind because he's a hybrid um, so you know, there's there's that that plays on his mind as well. Um, but Go Nagai, he, the, the, this is a um, a really interesting work from him. You, you, you can see he he really cares for humanity, um, even though he, dis, he depicts humanity going through really horrible things. I think Go Nagai really wanted to get a message across with this manga that you know you shouldn't glamorize things like war, vanity. Um, self-indulgence um you know you should embrace the things like uh you know friendship and um you know altruism um and uh and non-violence things like that so even though it's a, a really violent morbid a horrible series um it's it's got a it's got a very positive message behind it and, and you realize that towards the end um it's also it also comes included with uh, with Shin Devilman, which I believe is a uh, I think it's a sequel. Is it? Or, um, oh no, it's not a sequel actually. It, it, it's something that was published I believe after Devilman, but it's included right smack bang in the middle of these volumes. So at, at, at the at the end, like the the last couple of chapters of the first volume, and the first couple of chapters of the second volume are Shin Devilman, and it's really strange. Because it, it's basically it's this time hopping adventure where Akira and Fudo are um, are traveling through time, going back in the past to to um, to like Nazi Germany, uh, the French Revolution, um, the American Civil War, and basically um, it, it's like they're, um, they're they're trying to stop historical events from actually happen happening because demons were influencing, um, uh, you know human history by by setting in motion these wars the, the, there's one chapter that's particularly problematic um which features a chapter with with hitler and it seems to kind of um be apologetic to the nazi cause i guess or it could be interpreted that way which kind of um made for a bit of an uncomfortable read and i guess it's you know very much a product of its time um but shin shin devil man um, the 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 stories kind of in the middle of the of, of the volumes they're, they're essentially standalone. You don't really have to read them. You could just really skip them out. But I, I definitely say still read them, especially because they're still part of the same volume um, or volumes. Uh, you know they are interesting. And, and and the French Revolution one with Marie Antoinette is is, is probably it's probably the best one. Uh, that was a really good one. Um, so yeah, it, it doesn't make it too clear that that it, that it's separate because it's just smack smack bang in the middle of the story and it doesn't title it Shin Devilman. Uh, I learned that from from um, from looking it up 
uh, as it, it, it's just so random. <laughs> like the, the, the story is kind of flowing nicely and then it's Shin Devilman, like it, then it's just short stories with them like going through time and then it gets back to the story like after that's finished. So that was a little bit jarring and a little bit unusual. Um, I, I wish they'd have made it more clear in the volumes that, you know, that was a separate series. Maybe put it towards, maybe put it at the end, like after the, in fact, no, maybe not put it at the end because then it would have, it wouldn't have made sense. I, yeah, it, it makes sense where they put it, but I wish they'd made it clear that it was actually a separate series. But I, I understand why it was included in this collection because chrono chronologically um, it, it works, but it just doesn't make it clear that it's a separate series. So Devilman was incredible. Um, and I really needed to read something that was a little bit more lighthearted. Um, after after finishing this because it's so bleak, um, but alas, you know I, I have a TBR jar and I have to basically read whatever I get out of that. So that was uh, Gona guys, uh, Devilman. I'd love to read more Gona guy. Um, I'm aware that there's Cutie Honey um, that is released in this classic collection as well. I might pick that up. I know that's certainly not in the same vein, um, but I think Gona Gona guy is a really good storyteller uh, and he's a really good character writer as well. So I'm hoping that. Uh, Cutie Honey has uh, has a similar thing where you know it's not really necessarily my kind of you know something that I would go out of my way to to uh, to, to read. Is it? I think it's about magical girls or something like that. But if it's got good characters, who cares? Um, okay, so the next thing I read was so I finished uh, Ralgrad, the final volume here. And uh, I'll tell you something. I'm really, really, really glad I finished this. Uh, I'm, I'm glad it was only four volumes because it was just so bad. It's probably the worst shonen series that I've I've ever read. It's just so horribly paced. The artwork, albeit it's good because it's Takeshi Obata, the action scenes are really muddy and, and confusing to really understand what's going on. Um, I really don't like the design of the dragons and the monsters. They're just kind of, they look really flaky and they don't really look like they've, you, you, can't, you can't really discern or tell apart their, their limbs from their heads because they just kind of got this really angular sort of just really crap design. I, I just didn't like it. Um, the battle with the final villain, the main villain was just meh. Um, you know, it still continues to be, it still continued up to the last, um, you know, couple of chapters to be really problematic with, with how it treats um, its female uh, characters. Um, it was just a really unpleasant read. Um, what more can I say? I really, I won't be reading it again. If in, if, if anything, I might be, I might sell the whole series. Um, I actually have two copies of Volume Four, so I'm going to be selling one of them anyway. But, um, God, yeah, it's such an awful series. Um, I mean, yeah. So he's going up against impossible odds, and just really pulls out, you know, re uh, he pulls out, he pulls out ideas out of his ass. Um, you know, the, the main villain has, has has the power to kill you just by looking at you. Um, and they managed to they managed to kill her, you know, they managed to defeat her. Obviously, you know, how else could it end? I just don't recommend this series. I mean, it's out of print anyway, so it's very unlikely that anybody's going to be able to pick up these volumes for a decent price. Um, but yeah, I, I would just steer away from it. You know, it's, it's, got, it's got horrible character writing, horrible character development, a really average setting. Um, I mean, uh, if if you recall from my last video it's set in the blue dragon universe which i'm not familiar with i haven't played the games um so it's completely alien to me um but yeah it's just a a really unenjoyable series uh with a a subpar conclusion um really really horrible villain um horribly written villain horrible side characters there isn't one character in this that I enjoy um, or root for. Um, yeah, it was just, oh God, it just sucked so bad. <laughs> so I'm not going to say any more on it. Just don't read it. It's, it's terrible. It's really, really bad. So uh, let's move on to the next thing I read. And that was uh, volume one of uh, Gentleman, or The Gentleman's Alliance Cross. This is a, a Shoujo Beat series by uh, Arena Tanimura. I've heard the name. Uh, but this is the only shoujo beat manga that I own and it's only volume one and I remember picking this up because it was like a pound uh, and I do actually plan on selling this because I don't have any interest in reading it but I thought before I sell it I might as well just read it and it came up in my TBR anyway so um, I read volume one and it's basically about this girl on the front cover here called Haine 
Um, I call a hyena because it just sounds easy to, you know, it's, it's easier to say. And I think this is, I don't know if it's this artist, but this is the quintessential, like, big eyes, cute girl, shoujo sort of character. It's very, you know, stereotypically um, shoujo or manga, I suppose. I suppose, like, you know, when when people say, oh, I don't like manga because of the big eyes, they're probably thinking of this, um, you know, similarly with that character on the back there. And it is very much a, I mean, I'll admit, I don't read much shoujo um, at all. Um, I don't read any kind of series like this. And if I, if I had an assumption for what shoujo was, um and and all it did it would be it would be this because it's it's about this girl she's in like a prestigious school academy um she's got like this love you know this this stoic guy who she's in love with um and she becomes his bodyguard or something like that it, it's i didn't like it it was not really for me um it was only one volume but it's it's so bogged down with, with so many characters and and it, 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 throughout the volumes, there's, there's like these character bios that really did, that really kind of halt the um, the pacing of the story. I would have much preferred if those character bios were at the back. Not that I cared for them anyway. You know, it tells just really trivial, trivial, arbitrary details like their hobbies and their blood type and their favorite foods and just, just crap like that. Really. Um, sorry if you enjoy this series, but it's just. Nah, I mean, I think this is out of print anyway, so even if I liked it, I probably wouldn't have been able to get the rest of the volumes. And I believe it's a uh, an 11 volume series. Uh, I mean, look at, I mean, this panel, this page here is just so, it's so messy. It's so, so, so messy. So sometimes it's kind of hard to really understand what's going on because there's, there's just so much on a page. Um, there's an example of like one of the character bios. You see, it just really takes up the page. Um, kind of halts the progress of the story a little bit not that there is really much story um you know the artwork is nice don't get me wrong like tanimura has got really um good use of uh like screen toning to you know add a little bit of depth and shading to the hair um so that the artwork is 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 very very nice uh but un unfortunately it suffers from um just being too crowded and it, it does too much in in one volume. It, it wants to. It, it it's very evident that um, it, it wants to rush the story. And I think this is one of Tanimura's later works. So I think you could only really appreciate this if you're already a fan of her, because she references previous works um, and kind of discusses her motivations for for wanting to create you know certain characters in this um, and you know take elements of previous characters that she'd created from previous series and kind of you know interpret them in in, in these sort of settings so i think this is very much a a manga for people who are already a fan of her work so which is probably why i didn't enjoy it you may find some enjoyment out of it if you're already familiar with her writing style uh, i'm not so it probably wasn't a great introduction uh, to her work uh, and sadly i'll um, i'll be dropping this uh, and i won't be reading any more of it um i don't know if it's available on on the is, is there a digital service for Shoujo Beat? I don't know. I know there's obviously the Shonen Jump app, but maybe it's available digitally somewhere. Um, so, yeah, it just wasn't for me. Uh, the next thing I read was volume one of Kingyo Used Books. This is a, uh, a sig signature icky imprint from Viz. Uh, this is something I've had on my shelf for years. Um, Unfortunately, we only had four volumes of this release in the West, um, and is in Japan, I believe, a 17 volume long series. So, um, this is not something I'm ever really going to be able to finish, but that's okay because um, it's, a, it's a series of essentially short stories, um, with the central narrative being this woman here on the cover who owns a used manga um, store. And it essentially kind of it tells short stories of, of people in different you know um times of their lives and um how manga fits into where they are currently um so you know the stories about um you know a, a guy who no longer likes manga and he just comes across the shop and you know he rediscovers his passion for it because you know he finds a, a really out of print series that he used to really enjoy when he was a kid things like that it's just kind of like a real nice slice of life um story um it's um i've got the i've got all four of the volumes so i'll probably complete them um throughout the next month just to see 
you know where it goes see if it, see if there is any kind of serialized aspect or, or central kind of plot which from the first volume there isn't it's just literally a series of short stories and the main character hasn't been developed at all um, she just so happens to, to run the shop with um, you know with, with with her family um, but it, it's nice the artwork is super neat um, the characterization is uh, is nice as well and I, I like how the characters are presented you know anatomically correct it's obviously you know uh, typically manga style um, but the characters are, are, are on the whole you know, very realistic looking um, the only problem with this and the reason why I probably understand why it never it never got completed in, in English is because it references series that I don't think have ever been published in the West anyway so unless you're a real like real manga connoisseur you're probably not really going to get that much enjoyment out of it because um, some of the short stories um, rely on you having knowledge of the series that it's referencing for instance this character in this called uh, um, what's this guy's name uh, I can't remember his name ah yeah this character in this called Billy Puck and Billy is a, uh, a Japanese American uh, student who constantly cosplays as this character called Billy Puck and it's, it's, a, it's a series called um, uh, oh, I think it's actually called yeah it's called Billy Puck um, a really old series from like the 50s about like a boy detective I suppose maybe the inspiration for um, for, for Case Closed I don't know um, but I don't know anything about that series uh, I suppose learning who this character is in this the the, the guy who calls himself Billy Puck um, you know you, you kind of understand what kind of series it is that he really enjoys but because I don't know anything about the series I couldn't really resonate with the character that much or, or really you know grow to like him as it just seemed too obscure it was such an obscure reference and like he says quotes from the manga and I, I don't know what he's referencing uh, one thing that is cool though is that you know at, at the end of each um, at the end of each volume uh, well, I assume it's at the end of each volume but there's there's biographies for um, for the manga that it references so each chapter kind of focuses on a specific manga that kind of influences a person or um, you know helps a person at some point in their life you know whatever that may be uh, there's a story about an archer who um, a, 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 a professional or an, an amateur high school archer is part of his arching team and he's, he's doing pretty bad and um, he he discovers his love for, for, for or he starts reading a really a really funny gag manga that helps him it gives him some inspiration to become a better archer things like that um, but at the very least it kind of tells you um, you know biographies of, of the manga that it references which is kind of nice um, you know that, that that's something at least uh, kind of gives you a little bit of context um, but you know all in all uh, I enjoyed it it was it was a nice read um, you know it's got uh, five five short stories in this one volume so you can you know you can get through them pretty quickly um, and it's just it, it's okay it's okay so far um, I'll read th all four of the volumes and um, you know I, <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that I'll find it average because if I if I grow to absolutely love it I'll, I will hate the fact that I can't get the rest of the volumes. so for, for this because I know I won't be able to complete it I, I kind of do hope that I, I find it as average just so it won't feel like such a loss to me uh, but you know, I'm still happy to own all four of the volumes, and um, you know, I'll, I'll I kind of expand on my thoughts in uh, uh, in the next video next month um, if I if I decide to carry on with the rest of the volumes next month. Um, and the final thing I read was uh, another another series that I unfortunately only have the first volume for. This again, this is a series um, or of a single volume that I've owned for, for quite a number of years now, and I've never I never actually gotten around to reading it, and uh, that's dull by uh, Mitsukaze Mihara and it's, this also is um, a series of short stories it's a nice hardcover release it's got like a dust jacket and everything um, and it's got this cool uh, this cool page so it starts off with this page here but then that's kind of see-through and it shows like a skeleton behind there I thought that was really cool I thought it was like a really nice really nice design choice um, so Tokyo Pop went really in with um, with the quality of this book when it was originally published I think this was 
I think this was published over here in the West, or in America. Um, I think it was published in 2004, so this is quite an old volume. Um, obviously Tokyo Pop now, uh, I know they're back in the manga market, but uh, this was released at a time when they were still you know, in the throes of publishing regu uh, manga regularly before they went bust. Uh, anyway, this is essentially a, this is Jose manga, and it's a series of short stories about, uh, it's set in a world where um, realistic androids um, are sold commercially, so people can use them for, you know, everyday tasks that they otherwise don't want to do themselves, like, you know, um, being like a servant or a butler or a nanny um, or a companion, um, you know, and it really explores the nature between um, humanity and artificial intelligence. You know, I really got those, um, if you've ever seen the film AI by Steven Spielberg, um, it really kind of reminds me of that. And, you know, these androids, even though they're really super realistic, they kind of fall into the uncanny valley because they don't really, they can't really express the, the same emotions as humans. But some, but, you know, there's some androids that are so advanced that they don't realize that they're androids and they think that they maybe are human as they start to feel emotions and, and grow a conscience. Uh, so it really explores the relationship between between that. Um, and the, the short stories in this are, on the whole, absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, the characters are really well developed. Um, the, some of the characters are really, really realistic. Um, there is a, um, there's a character in this who, um, she belongs to a rich family um, and uh, she's got a really horrible relationship with, relationship with, with, with her in-laws who are trying to basically squeeze every last penny out of her um, before she dies and she's, she's had this android companion since she was like a little girl um, and that was like her only companion her parents didn't give her really any attention um, and she really grows to love this android but it can't really love her back because it's it's an older model um, and it just doesn't it's not programmed to feel emotion so she she really loves this this android because it's been her only companion throughout her life and this woman's dying and you know she's like do, do, do you love me um and it just can't it can't find itself to to, to love um it's really some of the stories in it are really really human um and and you know the relationships that that these androids have with these humans are uh are so important to them and it, it's so integral to, to, to the world that it's set in. Um, but you can see there's a real disconnect and, 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 and part of society that really disdains the use of androids, um, you know, for the purposes that they're made for. Um, it, it's, it's just a really interesting um, what if scenario, um, you know, how far should artificial intelligence go and, and, and how much should we rely on it? Um, can artif artificial intelligence be a substitute for finding true love and true companionship um, and I really like the themes that it explored. I'm hoping that I can get the rest of these volumes. It's a six volume long series and this is only volume one. Um, if you can find it anywhere, you know, I would say pick it up. Um, you know, if it's, uh, I mean, I haven't read much Jose uh, manga, but the Jose manga that I have that I have read, you know, this kind of really gives me kind of Kyoko Okazaki vibes where, you know, you've got like, um, you know, a heroine, uh, female protagonist who is just, um, you know, really mentally ill. You know, this really deals with uh, with suicide and like mental illness and uh, eating disorders and you know body dysmorphia um, and and how um, androids either help that or contribute to it. It's for for a volume as short as this and you know how many short stories it has. Um, it really touches upon some really emotional topics and um, it was a really really enjoyable read. Um, I will read this again at some point and uh, again I really hope I can get um, the, the rest of the volumes because from what I understand at some point in the story it becomes more serialized and it becomes more of a central narrative so I'm going to be really interesting to interested to explore what that might be um, and, and ha you know w whether it affects you know my enjoyment of it so anywho that's been another really long video um, that's what I read for February um, let me know if you've heard of any of these series or read any of these series uh, what do you think of the classic collection? So the, the Leiji, Matsumoto, Leiji Matsumoto and Go and Nagai stuff, particularly the, the Leiji Matsumoto stuff. You know, does it have any more series that are more polished? I know Captain Harlock was released after Yamato, and that is a lot more polished. Um, but, you know, it is. I, I'd, I'd just be interested to know 
um, you know, wh whether or not the anime that are released from these series are kind of like copy and paste versions or if they kind of go in their own direction. Um, so yeah, no, just just l let me know what you think of the Seven Seas Classic Collection. Um, d would you like any more series to be released under that format? Because I certainly would. Um, so yeah, no, just, just let me know your thoughts of, of what I've talked about today. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as always, leave, leave a like. Um, and uh, if you feel so inclined, uh, subscribe for more similar content. Um, as I said, I, you know, I'm going to be doing these on a monthly basis, though I am going to change the format. I think I don't, did I mention it at the start of the video? Anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to change up the format, um, and, uh, talk about the series as and when I've read them. So the, yeah, the, uh, the videos are going to be a little bit more choppy. You'll see me at different states of, of existence. So whatever. Oh God, I've been talking a long time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me and uh, I will see you for the next one. All right, see you.